Hello friends, welcome to our channel Anand Academy of Education. So we have been discussing the chapter atomic structure and in the last lecture we discussed what is an atom and how the concept of atoms existed since the time of early Greek and Indian philosophers and then we discussed what is the Dalton's atomic theory and its drawbacks and we also learned how Jill Thompson discovered electrons using his cathode ray tube experiment and then we we'll we eventually learned the properties of cathode rays and now in this lecture let us see the e by m ratio of electrons e by m ratio of electrons so this is our second lecture and in this lecture we will discuss the e by m ratio of electrons all right let's go so charge to mass ratio of electrons so what is e by m ratio of electrons e by m e by m so this e by m ratio is nothing it is just a ratio between a ratio between charge on electron charge on electron so this e is charge on electron charge on electron by mass of electron mass of electron so this e is charge of electron or charge on electron and this me is mass of electron so this value is called e by m this value is called e by m or simply this is e by m ratio of electron so who found this e by m ratio of electron it is jj thompson again so jj thompson discovered electrons and also he found the e by m ratio of electrons so jj thompson found the e by m ratio of electrons what is e by m ratio as i said it's just ratio of charge ratio of charge on electron to its mass and how did thompson found this ratio just like how thompson discovered electrons he also found this e by m ratio by using his cathode ray tube experiment by using his cathode ray tube experiment and by applying electric and magnetic field perpendicular to each other and also to the direction of the path of electrons so how did he found this ratio how did he find this ratio but this is not find this is find chemical mistake so how did he find this ratio by using his cathode ray tube experiment and by applying electric and magnetic fields perpendicular to each other for example let's take a three dimensional plane so this is x y z all right so for suppose if the path of electrons is along the direction of x axis then he applied electric field along the y axis and magnetic field along the z axis so these two fields are perpendicular to each other and these two again are perpendicular to the direction of the path of electrons perpendicular to the direction of path of electron so how did he apply how did he apply the electric and magnetic fields in a way that they are perpendicular to each other and also to the direction of the path of electrons and also to the direction of path of electrons meaning they are perpendicular to each other so the path of electrons is perpendicular to electric field and magnetic field similarly electric field is perpendicular to perpendicular to the direction of the path of electrons and also to the magnetic field and magnetic field is perpendicular to the electric field and also to and also to the direction of the path of electrons so this is how he find this he found this ratio so what are the experiment results so he did the experiment and what were the results so so he he found that cathode rays he observed so cathode rays deviate from their path of flow when applied electric or magnetic fields so usually in the absence of electric or magnetic fields cathode rays 
travel in straight lines without any deflection they travel in straight lines from cathode to anode we discussed this in the earlier lecture so if you did not see that lecture i request you to see that lecture first before watching this okay so cathode rays travel in straight lines from cathode to anode without any deflection in the absence of electric and magnetic field but when we apply electric or magnetic fields or in short when when there is electric or magnetic fields cathode rays deviate cathode rays deviate they can deviate like this 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 like this like this so in the presence of electric and magnetic fields cathode rays deviate from the direction of the path of electrons so they usually travel in straight lines so when when we apply electric or magnetic fields they deviate from their path like this or like this or like this so the amount of deviation how much they deviate from their path how much they deviate from their path depends on the magnitude of the negative charge on the particles so when there is higher charge on the particles when higher charge on this cathode rays there is greater deflection all right when there is greater charge on on these particles when there is greater charge on these particles there is greater deflection that means so they are traveling in straight lines and if the, if the charge on these rays if the charge on these rays charge q on these rays is greater then the the deflection will also be greater then the deflection will also be greater because greater charges uh, can uh, greater charges react with electric or magnetic fields greater charge easily reacts with electric or magnetic fields and so they they get deflected much greater when compared to smaller charges and the amount of deviation also depends on the mass of the particle lighter particles get deflected greater so if if a particle is very lighter or its mass is very very less then it gets deflected very much and third one strength of the electric or magnetic fields the amount of deflection will also depend on the strength of the electric or magnetic fields so when the electric field when the electric field's strength is higher then there will be greater deflection or when the magnetic field strength is higher then there will be greater deflection all right so the amount of deviation of cathode rays so the amount of deviation of cathode rays depends on this three this three things number one magnitude of the negative charge on the particle and mass of the particle and strength of the electric or magnetic fields you will you will understand this easily when we go to the next slides because in the next slide there is a diagram to to make you understand this easily and the electrons deviate from their path when only electric field is applied and hit at point a okay you can see this diagram here so this so this is electric field this is electric field this so when only electric field is applied so when only electric field only electric field this implies magnetic field is absent magnetic field is absent so this field is absent when only electric field is applied so as you can see this this is the this is the path of this is the path of electrons this is the path of cathode rays and uh, this is the direction of electric field and this is the direction of magnetic field so these three are perpendicular to each other so this is the direction of path of electrons and when we apply only magnetic only electric field sorry when only electric field is applied these electrons these electrons got deflected and hit this screen at point a hit this screen at point a 
when similarly when only magnetic field is applied when only magnetic field when only magnetic field is applied electrons hit at point c electrons hit at point c when only magnetic field this means that this is this is absent and this is present so when only magnetic field is applied the electrons got deflected from their from the direction of path of electrons from the from the direction of from the direction of their path and hit the screen at point c hit the screen at point c and uh, and when when we apply same strengths of electric and magnetic fields when we apply same sense of electric and magnetic fields so when there is equal strength so for example electric field has a strength x and the magnetic field also has a strength strength x so when these both have same strength these electrons again travel in straight lines these electrons again travel in straight lines and hit the screen this is the this is a fluorescent screen and hit the screen at point b by carrying out this experiments for several strengths of electric and magnetic field and by measuring the amount of deflections of electrons thomson found the e by m ratio so this is how thomson found the e by m ratio so he did, he did this experiment for several strengths of electric and magnetic fields and by by measuring the by by measuring the amounts of deflections of electrons he finally found the e by m ratio okay so the e by m ratio is 1.75820 into 10 power 11 coulomb per kg 10 power 11 coulomb per kg so this is the e by m ratio of electrons where m is the mass of electron and e is the charge on electron and this is mass of electron in kg so e by m ratio is 1.75820 and this is how jj thomson found the e by m ratio so he he used several strengths of uh, electric and magnetic fields to finally found this ratio okay all right and in the next in the next lecture we will discuss millikan's oil drop experiment we will discuss millikan's oil drop experiment oil drop experiment okay so until then bye and thank you for watching this lecture and if you like this lecture please subscribe like and share this to your friends because this video can be helpful for students preparing for intermediate mcet jee or any state engineering entrance examinations or, or of course need to